Hi, and welcome to Pharmacology of the Synapse. In this video, we will explore the use of genetic knockouts to investigate the role of different nicotinic receptor subunits in vivo. A genetic knockout is an animal that has had one of its genes, de genes deleted or otherwise rendered non-functional, such that it does not produce any protein. This is a very powerful tool that is frequently used to investigate the function of a specific protein. Mice are relatively frequently used as knockout animals because they are straightforward to make and the animals can be tested for behaviors. Other common animals used to make knockouts are flies and worms, which are simpler to make but exhibit less complex behavior. Recently, rats have been used as knockout animals. Rats have the advantage of exhibiting more complex behavior than mice. The one big advantage of a genetic knockout is specificity. You've deleted only that gene and no others. Sometimes this is the only way to manipulate a protein if there are no drugs that can target that protein. In the case of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, the drugs are nonspecific or hit multiple subtypes. The cons involved in the use of genetic knockouts is that the generation of the knockout is labor intensive. There is an optional video for this lecture where you can see the steps involved in making a knockout mouse. Secondly, the mice can have compensatory effects by having a gene deleted since birth. For example, the alpha-4 subunit is upregulated in an alpha-6 knockout mouse compared to wild-type litter mates. So this deletion of the alpha-6 subunit has caused a compensatory increase in alpha-4 expression. So the observed phenotype of the knockout may be influenced by these compensatory mechanisms. For the nicotinic receptors, a subunit knockout will affect all of the subtypes that contain that subunit. So deletion of the alpha-4 subunit will affect all of the combinations that include an alpha-4 subunit. This figure shows all of the nicotinic receptor subunit knockouts that were generated, and this figure was published in 2008, so there are even more knockouts since then. You can see some of the altered behaviors and physiological functions compared to the control mice. So for example, the alpha-5 knockout has reduced hyperlocomotion and reduced nicotine-induced seizures compared to the control mice. The alpha-4 knockout has reduced dopamine release compared to control mice. Some of the mice do not have any changes in behavior, such as the alpha-7 knockout. So this mouse does not have any differences in locomotor activity, nicotine condition place preference, or the development of nicotine tolerance, suggesting that the alpha-7 subunit does not play a role in these behaviors. You will also notice in this figure KI. KI means knock in, and so these mice were generated by replacing the gene with a mutant gene that causes the subunit to be hypersensitive to agonists. These mutations are usually point mutations that alter the response of the receptor to agonist. And the knock in animals should show opposite um, behaviors or an opposite physiological functions compared to the knockout animal. Here is an example of data from the beta-2 subunit knockout mouse. These mice were previously trained to self-administer cocaine, um, and the cocaine self-administration level is represented by this dashed line. They nose poke into a port to receive cocaine. When the mice were then switched from cocaine to nicotine, the mutant mice lacking the beta-2 subunit shown here um, in black in the field diamonds consume less nicotine compared to their wild-type litter mates in the open squares. These data show that the genetic deletion of the beta-2 subunit reduces nicotine-seeking behavior.
Here is data showing that genetic deletion of the alpha-5 subunit maintains nicotine consumption even at high nicotine concentrations, suggesting that the adverse properties of nicotine is mediated by the alpha-5 containing nicotinic receptors. Nicotine consumption follows an inverted U-shape as represented by the black line in the wild-type mice. Once the concentration gets too high, the mice eventually drop responding to nicotine, so they reduce their consumption and eventually will stop. In the alpha-5 subunit knockout mice in red, these mice do not show this normal inverted U-shaped behavior and continue to respond for nicotine even at very high doses where the wild-type mice have already stopped responding. Here is a graph showing the overall nicotine consumption in the alpha-5 knockout mice compared to wild-type littermates. And so here, this is nicotine consumption in milligrams per kilogram. And you can see that the alpha-5 knockout mice in red consume much more nicotine at higher concentrations compared with the wild-type mice in black, suggesting that the alpha-5 subunit is involved in the aversive effects of nicotine. In the synthesis activity for this week, we will investigate whether there are examples of genetic deletion in humans and what the effect of these deletions would be on behavior.